Well, welcome to the Pro Bricky exclusive YouTube channel with Reverend Dr. Jason W. Morrison, Theologist. I don't practice as a theologist anymore. Um, the call went off my life and I heard that and I responded to it and um, left the ministry and all other associated uh, leadership roles. I do have decades of experience, however, and I would like to share what I've learnt from that with the viewers of the channel. What do you do when you're being um, shit tested by your girlfriend? What do you do? Well, before that happens, you have to ask yourself, how are you tracking in the relationship? How is your mind, um, mind's awareness relative to where the relation is, what's possibly happening within her, and more importantly, um, what your interpretations are of how the relationship's going? Because sometimes you can be blindsided, completely blindsided, from where the relationship is really at. Now, you've got some things to contend with. You've got third persons and their influences. You've got habits, um, social media habits, um, orbiters that come with that around the girl, where she's getting um, validation from through the phone, what her responses are to that, what her um, emotional feed and satisfaction is from that. Um, how competitive is that relative and valuable to her? Is that relative to your um, position in a life? Because these days a lot of Sheilas are going with the technical, emotional validation and um, supply in preference to or alongside parallel with your emotional and physical supply, even though you're present. Um, people are getting the presence, the person's presence, eating that person like food, as it were, and then transitioning back to the technological um, elements of supply through these apps where they've got people that are interested in them, people that are indirectly trying to pursue them through them um, and all these other things I don't think if you've got a partner they should be on a dating app or anything like that as a matter of fact personally I do not recommend any dating sites um, for mine as the people on them are usually too irresponsible and um, are, are lacking accountability to be of really any long-term benefit to anyone, let alone themselves. And I say that from experience. So you can take it or leave it. I prefer to walk up to someone or speak to people that look attractive or possibly could be worth dating and um, go from there. But it limits your... Uh, it limits your possibilities. I mean, if you put yourself on the meat market, as it were, the human meat market, you got all sorts of possibilities. But again, there's these days it's quite desperate. Um, there's a lot of people that are unhealed, don't know how to heal, let alone be responsible or accountable. Um, and they come with all their troubles and all their habits and everything else, their dysfunctional relationships with their family members, um, med medicines, medical uses, uh, bodily organ problems and physical problems and ailments and things that you should know but you don't know because you haven't lived your life out with that person. That doesn't mean you're not going to want to care, um, you're not going to want to be there, but a lot of these people won't let you. Um, they just won't let you because they've been on their own too long, they've probably been neglected in the past, um, they've probably had relationship uh, relationships that just weren't what they should have been and they're just in a place where they've learned to be independent and they're really just out 
coming out to see where they can get affection and sex from and then go back home. That's the horrible truth of it. Whether you want to accept that or not is completely up to you. And if you want to put yourself in that arena, then by all means do so. Because there's no guarantee just by going up to people either that you are not going to face all these things as well. There's just no guarantee whether you go to church or whether you meet someone in, in the street of who you're going to meet. And I do have to say, deep down, I've met some very loving and kind and beautiful people. But at the same token, there's been some terrible um, elements that have come with them that have been, unfortunately, unresolvable. And that's not healthy for anyone. That's not what you're reaching out to do. I've had relationships that have started and there's been interchange from my place to their place and, and, and all sorts of things, that, you know. I'm not going to go into that, but my point is these are all shit tests. A shit test is something that challenges you in a way in which you're questioning whether you'll bend your standards or not for this person. And bending your standards means dropping... Um, a no for a yes when you shouldn't. Da, da 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 no. And changing it to, oh, okay. And it's against your conscience, it's against your values, and it's against your personal standards. Now, sometimes our standards can just be too high and we're going to end up on our own no matter what way we look at it. It's not something um, that I think... Um, the, the flexibility, the, the line between being too militant with your standards and being fair is very, very thin. And you have to be very careful how you're going to walk that line. Very, very careful. Um, by way of not dropping what your standards are because once you drop something once you drop a standard it's very difficult to bring it back up because you're culturalizing that person you're forming that person in their mind subconsciously um, to know um, what you'll be bending to and under what circumstances you'll do it now, what you'll find is some women in particular, and men, they're going to want certain things that are going to go against your beliefs and standards. And that's part of what the shit, test is, test, shit tests are going to be. And this is where the relationship starts to question where it's really going to be at whether it's going to go forward in a positive way, forward in a negative way, or not forward at all. And it's going to come down to the question of wisdom. How wise is the decision that you're going to make relative to the pressure that's being placed on you to bend what your conscience is telling you against what you think is right? And sometimes if you don't bend, these people that are shit testing you will, because they haven't got their way, do lots of different things. They'll leave a monkey branch and keep you um, interested or they'll just walk away. Or A lot of these people are pretty twisted in the way they go about things. Um, they say that they're monogamous and they might not be. Um, uh, people get... There's all sorts of immoral things that can happen when you engage these people and they don't get their way. Terrible, horrible things that can happen. Now, try dealing with the shit tests of a third person, like a family member associated with the person that you're with. Try that one out. It's absolutely ridiculous and ludicrous because you're not in the relationship with family members and all of a sudden you've got these family members running the relationship, believe it or not. 
and not even at that. Don't even bother with that one, just walk away for the benefit of the person and yourself. Because there's nothing sadder than seeing a woman that cares about family members and things and they're just up against her. They're just not going to let her enjoy the relationship. And the next thing you see this person um, caught between two um, very important things that she cares about. And really, I think from experience, the best thing you can do if she hasn't got the acumen to be able to stand up and say, well, this person's important to me, for whatever reason that might be, you're better off just letting that person go because it's going to wear you out in the end as well because it's not going to be reciprocal. You're not going to be able to mix with her family. She'll go to family functions and things on her own and you'll just have to find other things to do. Not that that's an issue, but it's just not healthy, I think. Um, if you're in a relationship with somebody, it should really work both ways. Just because people, um, third person people of the relationship, don't like who you are, that's not something you have to accept. And if she wants to go along with that, then you better question where her mind is as well. Because a lot of these, I've had asked one lady about such and such, and she said, I wouldn't be with anybody unless my children approved. Well, I'm not quite sure to what extent the children really have got anything to do with it. Um, once you involve children in adult business, you're really in, um, inviting trouble. That's all I can say. And if, as adults, if you can't figure out who you're dealing with quick, then you might not be fit to have, have or engage in relationships with strangers. One thing I can tell you, the warning signs of something might not be right is you're the things like, I've been looking for you all my life on the first date or second date. You're everything I've dreamed of. I knew the minute I saw you. Um, and not that these aren't true in the person's mind at that time. It's just a matter of you'll see whether it's true or not as the relationship goes on because this is just trying to hook you um, prematurely without any, the person doesn't even know who you are. So it's definitely a warning sign. It's just a desperate, uh, like a fisherman throwing a hook out with no bait on it. It's just a warning sign that something might not quite be right here. And I've had this happen many, many times and I've never listened to it. I've, I've, I've listened to it in the sense of hearing it but I haven't let loud statements like this to drive my decisions or conclude on commitment or devotion from the other person. Nor have I been rude enough to undermine or um, not consider what they've said. But that doesn't mean I'm attaching or being motivated by those statements. Time's the only way in which you can figure out who's going to be who in the relationship. So it's not easy when you're being shit tested because it can happen, different things can happen. You might test the partner. I don't, you know, could you please turn up on time? Some people are just serially late. They just cannot help. But be late, it gives them a sense of importance to be late. Um, as to me, it's just a matter, that's just disrespectful and rude. And I know there's certain circumstances where you can be late, but if it's just habitual, walk away because that person's going to drive you around the bend. Anywhere there's signs of this person doing things unnecessarily that show a clear undermining of their value for the relationship that's a red flag and you better be very careful how you deal with it and you should deal with it straight away otherwise these flags will build and grow that's how this happens if you let things build and grow they will turn around to bite you they will turn around and 
and undermine you. And it's your job to maintain your masculinity. That's what the woman's there for ultimately. So be careful, be aware, deal with the issues as they rise at hand. Make sure you're not being militant and so that you end up on your own all the time. Be fair and discerning, bring the issue to the forefront. Give that person time to resolve it. Um, I've given a person in one instance nine months. Didn't get resolved in the end, um, sadly. But you can be tolerant and that'll give the person time to work out whether you're worth standing up for or not. And if they don't, we'll just walk away. It's not the end of the world. There's always somebody else for them and for you. Possibly someone they'll stand up for or someone they, they don't need to. It doesn't matter as long as you get on with your life and you're running with your best health and best presentation, both mentally and physically, so that you can be something of value to the person that you're with. Everything comes down to reciprocation, honesty, integrity. And for you men that think you're alpha, if you drink, smoke, um, take drugs or anything, you're immediately not alpha or sigma, you're just a, a grub. I'm just going to say that to you, you're just a grub. And some of you women might want to look at yourself as well and just say, look, I could improve. Um, but that's completely up to you. Don't forget there is a God and he's there to help you and guide you and he will with his spirit. That's completely up to you. And I would advise in dating, you stay very close to God because you need all the discernment from his spirit that you can get so that you're not fooled or harmed or maimed. This is Reverend Dr. Jason W. Morrison, Theologist on the ProBrick exclusive YouTube channel. Thank you for joining me. <clears throat> and bye for now.